Thank you very much for attending everyone today. This is our weekly charting analysis with myself, Jasper Lawler. Pretends to be uh, another interesting week. We're starting to get a bit of a hefty sell-off after hitting some pretty high levels in equities last week. We've also got the, the big unofficial OPEC meeting in which a cut in oil production, uh, sorry, a freeze in oil production is is on the on the cards possibly. And we've got the uh, the US presidential debate tonight. So I don't think that's probably going to affect markets too much, but obviously uh, Trump is the is the kind of maverick here. Um, definitely not a status quo establishment candidate. And so if he puts on a really good showing, obviously increases his odds that um, that uh, he could secure the the presidential election. So. Um, you know that uh, potentially could shake up things come tomorrow. It's on pretty late for us in Europe. It's I don't actually know the exact time. I think it's it, it's going to be in the evening in US. It's going to be around I think one or two in the morning London time. So um, not something I'll be staying up to watch for. I have to say uh, a bit of an early riser, but um, certainly going to be checking in on some of the highlights. Two a.m. UK time. I've just been informed. Yeah, that's okay. <coughs> I'm sure it's probably going to be quite entertaining, so I'm definitely going to check out some of the highlights, but um, can't imagine that uh, uh, it's going to be worth staying up for. <coughs> for you, those of you on a night shift, yeah, absolutely. So, more specifically to markets, um, yes, the way I typically go about things in these webinars is to go through the equities markets first, then currencies, then commodities. If there's any particular big mover on the day, I'll maybe jump to that straight away. Not really got one of those necessarily today outside of shares of Deutsche Bank, which are getting an absolute pummeling, down about 6% last time I saw, down to fresh record lows. Um, Angela Merkel, as you may have read in my, um, you know, my update here, also the short update we did down here, um, Angela, Angela Merkel. <coughs> Um, is uh, is sort of suggested uh, reportedly that uh, they wouldn't that Germany wouldn't bail out Deutsche Bank and they've obviously just been hit by a potentially 14 billion dollar fine from the US and they already have a quite weak balance sheet so some some, some genuine fears that Germany's biggest bank uh, could go into bankruptcy and the the German government wouldn't actually bail them out so a bit of a systematic cause for concern there. Um, the real problem with these big banks is that they ha is their derivatives portfolio and how that's linked to so many different markets, particularly interest rates. And obviously interest rates have been low for so long. A lot of the bets are based on the interest rate staying low. Um, trillions of dollars of these derivatives. Um, no one really quite knows what they're worth. Uh, there isn't uh, you know, a lot of the banks don't mark to market, so they don't really price it according to current market prices. It's a bit of a grey area, and uh, the kind of uh, counterparty risk that would be generated if, if Deutsche Bank failed would be quite epic. You know, that would be financial crisis version 2.0 right there. So pretty unlikely, to be honest, that the German government wouldn't bail them out, but still obviously a bit of cause of concern. Um, I wouldn't be immediately jumping into their shares at the moment. That's Kent sending European shares down across the board, or at least that's the justification. But what I'd say is we're starting to see, a bit later than I expected, I have to say, the, the sell-off that I was talking about potentially kicking off last week in last week's webinar. I think the, the UK 100, the FTSE, is the more interesting example. Because these are some of the levels that I was highlighting <coughs> last week. Now, we've got a four-hour chart on. What I kind of the 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 point I was get, trying to get across last week is that if we jump off to the the weekly chart, actually a bit harder to see with all the squiggle I've got on here at the moment. But is that we uh, you know she pushed up into the uh, the highs of the year, came down, made a swing low down here just about, tried to run up and take out a new high, did not, made a new low, uh, so made a lower low, made a lower high. Um, that was the point that, to my mind, that was suggesting that we could be in for a bit of weakness and that any kind of rally up to the highs um, could be setting itself up for a, a sell-off. Now, as of today, that's starting to happen, but didn't really happen last week to any, in any meaningful fashion. 
So if we just had the simple uh, Fibonacci set up on that, so this is this is that um, that weekly low that got taken out with a gap. Notice that through the weekly low down here didn't get too far, and now the market's run high. We've got a gap um, to the top side, um, and uh, really went out and, in, and took out this peak here, but it was just it turned out to be just a little stop run. And uh, so obviously anyone having their stop losses above that, that weekly high up here got taken out. Um, so anyone who was selling had to buy up here and all those, all the big money that wanted to sell, took those buy orders and sold against them and hence the markets down here. <coughs> so obviously just looking at this, we got the sell off. So then we thought, so the last week's premise, last week's webinar premise was okay. At some point along these lines, there's going to be um, a potential for a sell-off back down to the low. So first first instance was the the 61.8 percent fib, which corresponded quite nicely with these lows here that we broke down through sharply. So there's a bit of a kind of um, correlation there, and it actually did coincide with the the 200-day moving average. So we did get a pull-off. <coughs> we did get a pullback. And if I drop down to the one-hour chart, we can see it better. So we got a big pull off from that level. So obviously the level played out. Here's the lows, you know, the si pretty much right in between. Uh, if I can zoom in a bit, right in between the, you know, the lows and the 61.8. That's where the market found its, um, you know, found its temporary peak. Sold off, took out this short-term low down here, and then we were potentially looking for a, um, a, a, a some sort of retracement up to here for the market then to resume its decline so you know if we had you know this is what I was doing at the time we got this little sell-off and then we were looking up here and we got the 61.8 didn't quite do it got a little sell-off there 78.6 got a little sell-off there and obviously just didn't do it and we ramped up and we ramped up to the next level to the 78.6 um, which if I pull out can see a bit more clearly on the four hour chart, here we go, we got to the level there, got a sell off, back down to the old high, and obviously we're in the basically in the midst of an uptrend then. So people bought the dip at the old, you know, the resistance turned into support. We've got a run up again. Could there were some signs of selling interest here, because look, it sold off again after another little stop run above the highs, sold off down again to it pretty much stopped on the money on the, the 61.8 level and the 200 day moving average and then the markets ran higher again right up to the peak now we're getting the sell off if we jump down to the one hour chart we can kind of see how we would have been playing that the second one here we would have been looking for the retracement obviously it just didn't do it and if you were short you probably were taken out by that run higher got the next move higher and then here obviously we've had two failed attempts to sell the market down based on that lower weekly swing but finally it's, it's starting to look a bit better now so we got the move down to the uh, off off the level that we were watching which was the high the weekly high pulled up to the 61.8 percent fear ball in between that and the 78.6 sold off got a little level yesterday uh, sorry early today um, beneath the low and then just tanked straight back down to the good old 61.8 and, and those former lows again um, and so here we find ourselves at support. Um, you'd imagine there's some scope for a little bit of a pop here, but I think, I mean, the way I'm viewing this is that we're starting to get um, you know, another push down. And so the next probably significant area of support, as I've mentioned um, in the chart forum here, is probably be down to this kind of gap, move higher, slash maybe this peak here, but I'd be looking more at the gap <coughs> for further declines eventually. <clears throat> so we're looking, again, we're hoping for some sort of pullback, potentially for another drop down <clears throat> to this support. But but obviously at this stage, you know, we've had the big move lower in the market. So now when you're looking to sell, the probabilities are starting to look a bit against you. This is the four hour chart, still some room to the downside, but obviously it jiggles around before it gets there. Looking at the one hour chart, you know, obviously we're heavily into over sold territory now so um, not typically the time you want to be 
selling, at least for a high probability setup. So I just thought it was quite interesting the way that th this market's panning out. Um, you know, just referencing the levels I was mentioning last time, and um, and then how things have transpired. Looking quite similar across the the other equity markets. Uh, if we pull up the Germany 30. By the way, any other equity market you want me to cover, or any other market, you know, feel free to do so. <coughs> so the you know what I've been keeping on the chart here, which is making it a bit unnecessarily messy in a way, but this is the big weekly level on here. We've got the break a breakout attempt here, came down the next week, here a little dip below, here tried to make up, you know, that was basically the resistance, right? Broken support push to new highs but no we didn't get the push to new highs we got a drop we've got a gap down the next week so similar concept right where it's taken out the weekly swing low so then the the idea is that hopefully we get a pullback for a lower risk opportunity to sell into a rising market with the idea that we could be about to turn lower obviously there might not just be any pullback and the market just drops off well okay um, it doesn't often work that way um, but you know if it does then you obviously you, you miss out and you've kind of got to adjust things to a trending environment on the short term but we did get that pullback um, so again laying, laying some Fibonacci's on here I mean in a way it doesn't matter which you use I mean I'm not you know benefit of hindsight says that this one was a bit better but you know you could equally use this decline it still looks okay so I did have this level on here I've taken it off which was this kind of rebound off this low here not really a daily swing but a, a shorter term swing at least which coincided with the 61.8 never didn't get much traction from that went straight up to the round number 10700 and this sw daily swing low down here didn't even get to the the peak in the Germany 30 so whereas obviously if you're looking at this decline of the FTSE we got through the 78.6 got a failed decline right and went straight up to the peak um, Germany 30 pushed straight through the 61.8 nothing really of note there um, but has fallen over the 78.6 and obviously we're talking about Deutsche Bank uh, the banking sector in Europe pretty weak and it part goes some way to explain the weakness in, in Europe versus the UK so hence we've hit that that big round number on Thursday shown signs of weakness on, on Friday coming off from uh, closing below that weekly level here and then lo, lo and behold where did we open but we did open below that 61.8 level and and we're dropping down and we're through we're, we're moving through this long-term swing peak that's um that was of note from that weekly chart so no not looking at this rally higher not really any really obvious places uh, for support other than where we currently sit which is this swing high here which corresponds to that longer term level so I think we can get a, a scope for a bit of a rebound here mm. and uh, but again I think probably the bias is going to be towards testing the lows mm. Um, let's move over to the US. So before I get into that, I did just post this before the webinar in case you hadn't seen it. <coughs> uh, this is, you know, this is the the page that we upload with the the weekly earnings calendar, just so you're aware of some of the big themes for the week. Um, so obviously we're talking about the OPEC meeting here. Uh, Michael's done a video on it, um, definitely worth a watch and some of the kind of key earnings we've referenced in the bullets here and then on a table with the uh, the big earnings coming out for the week so something to bear in mind in terms of you know what could be driving the indices more big UK companies admittedly but Nike tomorrow I've also done a little piece on, on Nike on the website um, but in terms of big companies Pepsi about it and obviously yes it's it's getting a little political as of tonight but then um, for the rest of the week uh, there isn't that central bank element that we've had for the past couple of weeks no no Fed or ECB meeting etc 
Um, so with that kind of gap in news, you know, that's when you can see a market, start, market starting to get a little bit rattled. Anyway, jumping back to the US 30. Many lines on here, apologies for that, but um, <coughs> again, just marking out the big swing levels um, on the, the weekly and monthly charts here. Obviously it was this zone that supported the bounce higher off that th those weekly declines, but we did uh, drop down to the daily chart. We did take out this swing low here, move down to that big weekly level, rebounded, C basically come back to the other weekly level, a reminder, here's that big thick line, right? For those of you who missed that, that's this line here. So we've come up to that. I know, think you know, not, I know not perfectly, but um, if you use that big weekly level in concert with this little swing low here, quite similar looking to the the Germany 30 chart, the kind of the swing low before the big breakdown. Uh, that's where we found a little top for the time being. <coughs> So obviously we can find a low down here and go up to make new highs, you know, and it is at large um, still a kind of rising bull market. So got to keep in mind that's a distinct possibility. But just the fact that we've broken these lows to me suggests that we're going to go down, challenge the lows, maybe like new. That um, obviously you've got to kind of change your premise a bit. Should the structure change and we take out the highs, but <coughs> got to work with something. Um, so given the fact that we found um, uh, the resistance here and we're falling away, I would say the next support is probably these swing lows down here. Most importantly this one because this was the low with a high on either side. Uh, but these two when you look on a four hour chart will line up pretty well. Mm -hmm definitely some interest around just basically around 18100 and then um, the market's been choppy around it but obviously the big number to work to watch out for the big psychological level is 18,000 um, so already had two one attempt to get through failed another attempt to get through failed run a bit higher didn't get much higher you know right the kind of bulls trying to push the market up to new highs failing so far so if we get do not get another test of course there'll be some trying to accumulate down here but you would think by the third time good chance it can give way so there we go we've um, we've, we've covered the the equities here let's move on to, to currencies I'm gonna do it up front just because just so I don't forget uh, I know we've got a crest for sterling yen, so let's have a look at that. Mm. Obviously some uh, pretty sharp declines. It's a big mover in general. You know, if you want lots of pips <coughs> in a day, you know, sterling yen is is, is the one to trade. Um, it has a marginally wider spread. Um, obviously all the cross pairs do, um, but arguably you get it back in the amount it moves per day. So we've got this um, unconfirmed, just off two major swing low, kind of rising trend line here, which the market's looking to come and challenge. Not too far off. We're obviously below the big 130 handle. Um, so this is a slightly rising trend line, but obviously it's just a generally, generally we're looking at 130 is the big level that the market's trying to take out. And it's not, I don't, is any of these, I think this might have, the last was 130.05. What was the last here? 130.06. So we've not actually had a close below 130 is is um, think something to take note of here in Sterling Yen. So a close below 130, um, you know, that's not looking good for um, for going along the market. To be quite frank, um, obviously it's a big level of support. These things aren't perfect, so we you know we can get. A flush down through these lows, a bit like we we're looking at the equities where we had that little pop to the upside. Um, you know, stops taken out above there by the by the big trade uh, by the big market making banks <coughs> before the market drops. Um, equally, we can get the same the same sort of thing here. Um, big banks looking for liquidity below 
uh, where there's going to be lots of um, of orders, obviously um, stop losses for those going long, uh, but also um, uh, stop orders to go short for those go trading the breakout lower. So all that selling interest can be bought into um, should should there be the um, the desire to <coughs> by the big traders. Um, nonetheless, it sort of looks like uh, you know again really got two lines to confirm here. But it, you know, it basically looks like a um, big drop lower triangle before a move lower. And if you know, if we do get a breakdown from 130, we're probably going looking at 120 fairly quickly. I would say because it's been quite a long consolidation. And if you consider, we basically dropped two big figures, well, three big figures to the low in a pretty short space of time. You can imagine dropping one figure from here. I don't think it's going to take too long, and 110 could easily be on the cards, um, judging on the you know the the kind of moves that we got here. <coughs> it's it's a bit too of a long kind of pattern to be. It's not a bear pennant or bear flag. Um, you know, normally there's they're much more short term patterns would kind of be done like in this sort of time frame and done. Um, so this is a big long-term triangle pattern which can break to the bottom or to the downside um, but uh, you know based on the we, you basically have to wait for the price action I think around this 130 level it's um, it could end up being a, a quite a nice buy at a, a key support level um, at the moment it's looking very weak it looks like it's gonna break And helpful, obviously, when you're trading a yen pair, just to look at the the dollar yen being the most actively traded. So we'll do that now. So here you see a sort of similar triangle pattern, a um, bit more nicely. There's a big long-term trend line, but it just it looks so messy on the chart. I've got rid of it. Um, we we you know we know the long-term trend. It, it the 200-day moving average is working quite well to kind of show where the trend is as well you know the big question is do we take out the 100 level I think you know if and when we do uh, get a close below 100 uh, close for the week I should say I don't think this was Thursday that we did actually get a last 99.88 so we did get a one day close below 100 there on August 18th uh, and then obviously the market just rapidly moved higher again afterwards. Uh, but if we get a close for the day again, then a close for the week, you know, I think it's, uh, again, this has been quite a long period of consolidation. <coughs> so I think we get to uh, get to 95 pretty quick um, if we if we break below, um, below 100. Obviously you need to start eyeing up the, um, the big long-term levels because we haven't been here for a while. This is a monthly chart. Um, you want to start looking at the lows, um, you know, kind of down here, kind of thing. So 96, based on this low from uh, 2013, potentially a big level to consider. And we've got this swing high from um, back in 2010, which fits in just below 95 at the 94.80 type area probably is around 95 we've gone that peak let's see what's the high there oh yeah 94.98 so pretty much 95 um, and obviously we've got that little spike lower through there so 96 conservatively 95 uh, slightly more aggressively is a is a um, long-term kind of pivot area um, so again yeah and it's actually you know useful to look at these monthly charts somehow because you can see look attempt bounce off 100 failed Big long wick, bounce off 100, failed. Big long wick, bounce off 100, failed. Another move down to there. Is it going to end up being another week, wick higher? We're on the 26th of September, so um, if there is going to be a rebound in dollar yen, it's going to have to be pretty quick because the month ends on Friday. So, you know, we've got a week to see a big rebound off dollar yen. So, obviously, that can happen. That certainly can happen. Um, but uh, it's hard to really see what the trigger for that would be. The Fed was pretty dovish, and um, and the Bank of Japan have obviously slightly changed their um, 
their monetary policy stance, but not by much. So you know the market reaction at the moment is um, the uh, the the dollars down, the yen strengthening, not long after those um, that Bank of Japan meeting. So fundamentally, it sort of looks like dollar yen's got room to move lower as well. <coughs> But uh, nonetheless, you know, don't don't overlook the power of support. You know, you know, in general speak, you obviously want to be buying. So, uh, in my opinion, you want to be buying a support, selling resistance as a, as a as a lower strategy way of trading. That's generally what I kind of talk about in these webinars, rather than kind of breakout trades, which obviously generally involves you break. If you're selling a breakout, you're obviously selling at the support or buying at the resistance. Um, trying to capture that momentum breakout you know that works but it's um, it's not it's not something I've found um, any success with <coughs> so I hope that helps so we cover the yen pairs um, let's, let's jump over to sterling like I mentioned it's pulled off the lows a bit actually but um, still generally weak in, in sterling so this is the um, <coughs> the kind of long-term rising trend line off the Brexit lows, just done on a four-hour chart, but you can see we're moving through that. Um, we've got a nice little whipsaw, false breakout on Friday, but the market only edged higher and has rolled over again to test it. So, based on the very minimal bounce we got from that back down to the lows, you'd assume that lows getting taken out. And uh, and obviously the the le the key levels to test are those swing lows. <coughs> but it's um, I mean I don't think there was much opportunity here. <coughs> Only in so far as you know if we drop down to the one hour chart. I mean I was, you know the market was absolutely tanking on Friday. You know you know I was having discussions on on Twitter. You know is this um, <coughs> is this a, a stop run? beneath the obvious support here or is this a, a meaningful breakout which sort of turned out to be both it was a stop run on that on Friday and we've got a push higher above the highs but you can sort of see here that um, you know if you were looking for some you know desperate case to, to go short at higher levels look here was the high and then we just didn't do anything above it and then drop straight back down you know maybe from from here Hard to imagine how you could really have pulled off a short up here, but you know, down here you think, well, okay, this isn't looking too good. <coughs> and obviously, if you look at this last hourly candle, you know, where have we pulled back from? But the, you know, that same support level derived from the higher time frame. So looking pretty soft, I would say, the market. But again, we're at key support, so um, looking soft, not really a high opportunity, high <coughs> probability scenario for selling at the moment. Um, so maybe look for the market structure to change for um, a break higher. You know, if we get a push back above this high, um, and then a retracement, you know, that would be a scenario in which um, you know I'd be maybe interested in in buying into the potentially triple bottom here in Sterling. But at the moment, um, you know, looking like it's going to continue down. Okay, um, I'm going to quickly touch on Euro. There's just there's not too much to to chat about here. Um, John, you're saying about the RSI divergence? What on on Sterling, mm -hmm. on the daily chart? Let me jump back to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Off these lows here on the one hour chart. Mm -hmm. We've not taken out the. Uh, Yeah, I was going to say on that uh, one hour chart, we've not quite seen it. But, um, yeah, it's a tricky one here. We're getting a bit more follow through on these little swing lows. We've, uh, this is this is actually more like a, um, if, you do, if you're interested in RSI studies, there's kind of two ways of looking at things. There's the bullish and bearish divergence. Um, and then there's uh, positive and, and negative reversals. This is almost like a positive reversal where price has held, showing strength, whereas momentum's dropped. So the price is looking strong despite the weak momentum. 
so that can you know sometimes foretell stronger market but obviously looking at maybe these kind of swings through here you know we were making lower prices and the price was uh, the momentum was trending higher but we've sort of we've broken that mold a little bit so you know maybe that's why we got the big the nice uh, false breakout here but obviously it's just not followed through and you can sort of see that this this candle down here which we sort of looked on the short time frame is breaking that bound to that resistance has also broken down through this rising RSI line So there we go. I think my, I mean, my bias is still to the downside. So we get some big. I think we need a big move to the upside in cable, and then um, that kind of tells us there's some some buying interest there to, to buy on the on the pullback from. At the moment, it's it's a falling market. Okay, as I said, I'm gonna how are we do. Oh, completely running out of time here. <coughs> so. Euro, I mean, this is one of the occasions where obviously if you'd, if you'd basically had an order resting at the low, well, this, you know, the trade worked out perfectly. Um, had, you been, had you been waiting for that level to kind of work, I'm not sure you've had much opportunity to buy on any kind of pullback there. Um, well, possibly looking at this one hour chart, you got the move off the low here, barely took out the kind of short term resistance I guess you could argue it did here so if you maybe you know if you're really monitoring this level looking for the push higher and then the opportunity to buy at the lower level you actually did get it so all I've done here is just you know we've got that big daily level to look out for so, as I said, you can either have the order resting down there with the stop loss at some predetermined level, maybe under the round number or something, or you can wait, you know, if you've got the time, you can wait for the price action itself. And you've got your first pullback opportunity down here, maybe. I mean, it barely took out these highs. I wouldn't classify that really as a breakout. Um, that's more of a false break to my mind. But you obviously got the pullback to the 61 eight point there. But then the market gave you a favour with this big volatile price move it gave you a little move down to in the middle of the um, the 78.6 and the 61.8 and shot higher and you know take take your profits up here or or up here based on these these prior resistance levels or if you're feeling confident you know up at the kind of daily level up here which to my mind is the next resistance area where you're looking for a similar sort of setup to this but reversed um, I think that probably gives way given that it's held a couple of times third time gives up and then the high probability trade up here maybe around 113 the round number or uh, 113.25 and then obviously this is the kind of bigger weekly level up here um, which uh, you know which is a, a stronger place to look for again uh, and just bear in mind the market environment that we're in is a range so there's no, you know, it's it's a good environment for like selling on the selling on strength and, and buying on the weakness. Um, it's not a sustained trend one way. Obviously, if we're breaking out to the top side, that you know, it's not really when you want to be looking for um, selling selling the strength. Um, but that's not the environment we're in. It's, it's in a total chop. So any decent resistance area, you know, look for a reversal. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, oh, man. Apologies for going over a bit here, don't I? I think I've got a bit keen on that FTSE chart and um, gone over. Over to Brent. Obviously, you know, one of the key markets to be looking at this week, given the the OPEC meeting. Um, so I know this is a bit confused, but it's just interesting how the FIBs, again, uh, you know, pick, pick your range. I would say maybe these highs have been working, you know, looking at this high, this high. Um, you know this swing low here, this swing low here, as the kind of maybe broad uh, one way to look at the range, false breakout, false breakout, and so just looking at this run higher, this rebounded from the 61.8 level here, came up to to this 
these peaks here and it's rolled over. If we get rid of that, that move, uh, that recent move lower from there has now found resistance at the 61.8 and the market's falling away. So, you know, if you, you know, the, the, the 48 round number combined with the 61.8 in a range market is a confluence of resistance and, you know, uh, it's it's a place to either have an order or again look for the market the, the, for the price action. Fundamentally, I don't think that they're going to reach any agreement to freeze output this time around. Um, and obviously, looking at um, looking at the price action today, the market doesn't really think that. But you know, we've known about this meeting for a while, and the market's range bound with a slightly bearish bias, I would say. And I think that probably reflects the meeting pretty well. You know, we don't really know what's going to happen. Um, they could freeze output. That's good for all prices. They're, but they probably won't. Uh, and that's bad for all prices. I mean, I could comment on all the twos and fro's of all the comments that have come in and out of these various oil ministers. We had more from the UAE today. Um, but honestly, it's, it's, it's all fairly meaningless. Except in a kind of day trading context. Gold has been very interesting. We're going to finish off with this. So, in terms of a sort of <coughs> top-down analysis of gold, again, we're in a range market, uh, a range-bound market. So, looking for opportunities to sell strength by weakness. We've had a good run higher here. We've had, a, you know, this is a, a fairly decent declining, well, a pretty obvious declining trend line here. Um, so I'm going to drop down to the four hour chart. This is that last touch on the trend line. Um, and then we just had a nice confluence here. So, th you know, in terms of, you know, when do you place an order hanging out there and, and when do you wait for the price action confirmation? Big reversal at that level and also perfectly the 71.8. Uh, 78.6 fib and these lows here these um which which um happened before the big breakdown lower so all those three put together makes it a pretty strong level and you know look at that reversal we got um <coughs> so then if you had waited for that move <coughs> obviously you're looking for some opportunity for the market to come back and uh it did it came back to the 61.8 on three sort of separate occasions there and we've rolled over down to a new low now the market's given us another opportunity it you know the fact that it didn't sell off big down there is, is honestly not a not a good sign and it could be an indication that we're going up for a test of the trend line so i'd be cautious here but um you know if you're looking for a pullback from those lows and you know you're kind of we're kind of at it again right but um again not a kind of held this support only marginally broke below this one it's making high highs um, you know, I wouldn't probably look at the 78.6, maybe just the same level again, if not um, the previous peak and then the trend line is areas where gold could roll over. You know, um, you know, if we're if we're looking for that uh, trend line to hold, um, yeah, it's starting to look like there's some. You know this this rally higher. You know it's kind of rolling over a bit, um, potentially for some weakness back down to the the support in the one three twenty area. Okay, I'm going to call it a day there. Um, apologies for for rolling over a bit. <coughs> um, thank you very much for attending. Good luck with your trading this week. It's Jasper Lawler signing out. <coughs>